the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today on this episode. We are continuing with our campaign through the Forgotten Age cycle. That's right, we are playing through Heart of the Elders, uh, the third mythos pack in the Forgotten Age cycle. This is a blind playthrough, of course, as we have been doing for this cycle, so if I do make any mistakes, uh, my apologies ahead of time. It looks like I have a double header for you uh, today. This is uh, Heart of the Elders is a uh, an interesting take on scenarios in that it is divided into two parts. This is part one when we uh, head back into the jungle and then uh, if all goes well, hopefully we will uh, be able to play part two as well. As uh, you may remember, the uh, Boundary Beyond was a uh, particularly disastrous scenario for uh, Ursula Downs. All we uh, got out of it was uh, 1 XP, a mental trauma, bringing our mental trauma total to 2, and a new weakness in our deck, so I don't think uh, we could have done uh, really much worse. I guess we could have uh, come out of it with 0 XP, but uh, 1 XP isn't really enough to buy anything I want. So uh, we are playing through uh, this scenario with that Ursula Downs deck. Now, uh, after that uh, run through of the Boundary Beyond, I did uh, play through it again with a different Ursula Downs deck that was, uh, I felt, slightly stronger. I had uh, basically kept the XP the same, but uh, changed around a bunch of the cards, and that uh, deck was able to beat the scenario. I was awfully tempted to, uh, to keep that deck uh, going forward, but... Uh, I've made my bed, so I'm uh, going to lie on it here, and uh, we will continue with this Ursula Downs deck until such time as it uh, simply becomes uh, untenable and it's uh, not uh, able to uh, to be very competitive, at which point I think we'll probably switch over to uh, playing standalone mode uh, for the remainder of the uh, the campaign. However, this is uh, that Ursula Downs deck. Uh, no changes from the last time around. We've got, uh, we've got our Disc of its Omna to deal with enemies. We've got a copy of Persuasion to deal with some enemies. We've got uh, level 2 Hyper Awareness to get those Agility and uh, I believe it's Intellect bonuses, as well as Pathfinder for movement and a copy of Charisma so we can use uh, a bunch of those allies that we have uh, in the deck. So uh, after the Boundary Beyond, we had another interlude that seems to be a, a fixture of this uh, particular campaign where there's an interlude after almost every scenario. And uh, we had to uh, cross off some more uh, supplies. We did have to cross off provisions. And uh, as I mentioned in the Boundary Beyond, you, you uh, end up driving all the way from Arkham to Mexico City with uh, Ichtaka. And we had to use some gasoline, and I said that... Uh, that's uh, probably not enough gasoline to get us where we want to go. And sure enough, uh, after uh, the Boundary Beyond, on our way to the jungle, we ran out of gasoline. Man, you had one job at Chitaka. One job just to, to keep the car fueled up, and uh, she let us down there. So we are out of gasoline. That has some uh, pretty dire effects uh, on uh, our playthrough for Heart of the Elders because uh, it means we cannot mulligan our opening hand. So uh, we're really going to be, uh, we're just going to have to take what we get on our opening draw. Uh, that's, uh, I'm not looking forward to that. We do have, uh, we did cross off a provision so we didn't have to worry about that. Here is uh, the campaign so far. Quite a few things, uh, but not many new since the uh, the last since the boundary beyond. Uh, we did suffer the one trauma because I was defeated. The one mental trauma that brings us up to two. We have one path that we know uh, to the uh, our ultimate objective. So uh, that has some repercussions, and we did run out of gas on our way back to the jungle. Thanks again to uh, Ichitaka and her unfamiliarity with modern technology. That's, uh, that's what I'm going to blame instead of my, uh, my uh, provision choices. So this uh, going into this scenario, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. I think this is the first time uh, we've encountered a scenario that is very much similar to another scenario. 
as you uh, remember, we did play through the Untamed Wilds and the Doom of Estli uh, to kick off this campaign, and it feels like Heart of the Elders is sort of retreading familiar territory, which we haven't really had before. All of the scenarios have been uh, quite unique, and so this one seems like a like we're just uh, playing through the same scenario again, but uh, it's too early to say that. So uh, ask me again when this uh, scenario is done, and we will see how um, whether it's it's similar to the Untamed Wilds or whether it's uh, quite a bit different. Uh, we do have the explore mechanic, of course, and uh, and a lot of the enemies are the same. So it could be very very much the same, but we shall see. We are set up in Octagon and uh, ready to go. We have uh, Ursula here. Of course, she has her two mental and uh, one physical trauma. She starts uh, with a copy of Charisma in play. Now, uh, at the beginning of the setup, you, you have a choice of asking one of your companions, either Ichtaka, Alejandro, or the Expedition uh, Journal. Uh, you can refer to them to determine what the uh, mysterious pillars are outside of uh, the, uh, this uh, mouth of Kinyan the depths beneath this cave and so we decided to ask uh, Ichtaka and uh, because we asked her we uh, get to start with her in play so that's a nice uh, bonus she gives us plus one uh, combat plus two while attacking an enemy with victory X and we get plus one agility plus two agility instead if attempting to evade an enemy with vengeance X and after you add an enemy to the victory display we can exhaust her and uh, you and Ichtaka each heal one horror. So that's a nice little benefit, considering we are not going to be able to mulligan our uh, opening hand. We are starting at the mouth of Kinyan, the depths beneath. It is a two-shroud location with uh, one clue, and it is a cave, and it has an action. Check your supplies. If you have a map, look at the top two cards of the exploration deck, Discard each treachery looked at by this effect and uh, shuffle the expo. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Depths beneath is not the, the right one. We want uh, the Cavern's Maw. Sorry, the Mouth of Kenya and the Cavern's Maw. It's a two shroud location with zero clues and uh, it has the action resign. Let's make camp and solve this puzzle tomorrow. I, uh, that's. Uh, I guess we're just going to procrastinate and just hang out in the jungle for a day. That doesn't sound very appealing. And it has the action, check your supplies if you have a compass, which we do. Look at the top three cards of the exploration deck. Place one on the bottom and the other two on top in any order. So that is a, a nice little bonus. We do have the compass, so we will be able to look at those top three cards and... Uh, place one on the bottom and the other two on top. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing if that will have uh, will help us through this scenario. We are playing uh, Agenda 1A is the jungle's heart. You are deep in the jungle now, surrounded on all sides by the uncharted wilderness. All around you, the rainforest sings, its lyrics found in every chirping insect, every snapping tree branch, every serpent's hiss. And it has the action explore, draw the top card of the exploration deck. If it is a connecting location, put it into play and move to it. And it has a doom threshold of five. Our act is 1A, search for the pattern. Six stone pillars surround the entrance to the cavern, each carved with a series of uncanny grooves and hieroglyphs that form an intricate pattern. Touching them causes the grooves to grow brightly, and twisting them causes the patterns to shift and change. Perhaps these patterns match the glyphs found in other regions of the jungle? And it has, uh, we will need two clues per investigator to advance. Uh, it is also noteworthy in this scenario that if you manage to discover all six paths during the Boundary Beyond, which I think would be uh, very difficult to do in solo, but uh, quite possible in uh, in multiplayer, you get to skip this scenario altogether, so uh, you just don't even bother playing it. You move right on to uh, part two. 
but we did discover one path so we do start with a resource on uh, the mouth of Kinyan so hopefully that will uh, we're a little bit closer anyway to uh, completing our ultimate goal we are playing Heart of the Elders on standard difficulty. The skulls of which there are two are minus one, minus three instead if you are in a cave location. And uh, of course we are in a cave. The cultist of which there are two are minus two. And if you fail, you place a doom on your location. That's uh, been a theme throughout the uh, Forgotten Age cycle, placing doom on locations. The tablet is minus two, but we don't have any tablets, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, it would be an auto fail if we were poisoned, which we've managed to avoid thanks to uh, Ursula's high agility. And the other thing is a minus three. If you fail, take one horror. So that uh, we really don't want to be pulling that. And of course, there's that nasty minus five token, which we seem to see an awful lot of. I think I drew, uh, I watched um, the Boundary Beyond playthrough again just to, to catch up and uh, I think we drew three or four of them in that game so that was uh, pretty rough that is uh, basically going to be an auto fail and yes, you're, unless you're prepared for it I think we're ready to go so let's get started I will shuffle up the deck and uh, we will just draw our opening hand and, and that's what we're going to get we uh, unless we get any weaknesses we won't be mulliganing so let's see what we got we did get a weakness we got our call of the uh, unknown so we will replace that and uh, we will shuffle it back into our deck so we got we are starting off the game with an unexpected courage uh, dr ellie horowitz a copy of pathfinder another copy of pathfinder and a copy of manual dexterity so all in all not a uh, terrible hand uh, dr ellie horowitz will come in handy because we do have our charisma in play and we can play her and hopefully grab the uh, disc of its omna so we can get rid of an enemy and of course pathfinder is always good especially if you can get two of them down so it's nice to see both uh, the skills i'll i'll you know, I'll take them. I'd rather they were something else, but uh, we will deal with them, and we get uh, Ichitaka in play, of course. So I think we are uh, ready to go here, so we will throw Ursula over at, uh, at the mouth of Kinyan. We will get our three actions this round, and I think we're going to start off with Dr. Ellie. We will play her first for three resources. We'll put her into play, and when we put her into play, we get to search the uh, top nine cards of our deck for a relic. Of course, we are looking for the disc of its Zamna. Hopefully, we will find one and be able to stack it on her. Top nine cards, there is no disc, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have any other relics in there by chance. Nope, so she just whiffs. That is unfortunate. Hate to see that. So she is just going to be uh, one. She's got one health and two uh, sanity. So we'll be uh, dumping, dumping stuff on her. I think what I'm going to do to start off is we're going to take the action on the mouth of Kinyan to uh, look at the top three cards of the exploration deck and put one on the bottom and uh, two on the top in any order. We will uh, shuffle it up. So we look at top three, is it? Top three. So the top card is the rope bridge. The second card is lost in the wilds. And the third card is circuitous trail. So the mouth of Kinyan is connected to the squiggly line, the T, and the hourglass. Do uh, none of those actually uh, connect at all to the, uh, the mouth of Kinyan. That's uh, unfortunate. So even if we do explore, we are not going to get uh, a location in the top two. So I'm going to put the Lost in the Wilds on the bottom. And we will just put it aside for a moment. 
and uh, we will put the rope bridge and the circuitous trail on top and then we are going to explore so that was our second action as our third action we'll take the explore action on the jungle's heart so we will start drawing locations we are looking for squiggly line t or hourglass the first is the rope bridge which is not a connecting location second is circuitous trail it is not a connecting location third is the temple of the fang it is a squiggly line so it enters play that is uh, nice so we are going to shuffle everything back i will shuffle that lost in the wilds back in now since it was on the bottom but we do have to shuffle our deck we do get to uh, move to the temple of the fang as our action as a part of that to explore temple of the fang is a two shroud location with one clue Temple of the Fang gets plus one shroud for each vengeance point in the victory display, and it is worth victory too. That is awfully nice. Uh, we do uh, get Ursula's free action. Uh, her response lets us, uh, uh, after we move to a location, we can take a free investigate action. So we are four versus two. Let's see what the Chaos Bag has to say. Chaos Bag says Cultist. That's a minus two, and if you fail, you place a doom on your location. So we are successful, and we grab one clue. Nice start to the game so far. Our first uh, explore action was successful. We got the Temple of the Fang out, and Temple of the Fang is uh, worth two victory points. So that is a, uh, that's a big plus for us. Uh, we do need to, to gain some experience. And we need one more clue for a search for the pattern, so that's, uh, that's good. We will go to the upkeep phase. We will draw a card. There is emergency cash. We will gain a resource. And that will be the turn. We will add a doom to the jungle's heart. And our first encounter of the card of the game, I am going to shuffle up the deck one more time. Hopefully for luck. And uh, we will see what we get. Our first encounter card is going to be the Apex Strangleweed. Uh-oh. It uh, will simply enter play with us. That is bad news. Apex Strangleweed has three fight, six health. Wow, that's, uh, that's a beefy enemy. And uh, three evade. It has uh, the creature and flora traits. It is alert and retaliate. Wow, all the enemies in this cycle seem to double up on the, uh, the keywords. So it will uh, attack us whether we try to fight it or evade it unsuccessfully. It has the forced effect after Apex Strangleweed makes an attack of opportunity against you. Check your supplies. If you do not have a pocket knife, lose all remaining actions and end your turn. It's worth a victory point, and it will hit you for one health and one sanity, or one damage and one horror. We did not bring a pocket knife, so that is uh, very unfortunate. So I'm not sure whether retaliate is a, is a an attack of opportunity or whether it's simply an attack. That's an interesting question. I'll probably just play it as an attack of opportunity and we'll see how we go. So we need to get away from this thing. We do have uh, we do have five agility thanks to uh, Ichitaka and it only has three and we do have a manual dexterity so we are okay but we will need to uh, to explore. So we will gain our three actions first action will be to evade the strangleweed so it is a three we will play our manual dexterity so we will go five six seven versus three i like those odds chaos bag says zero so we do get to draw a card and evade the strangleweed and we get another manual dexterity so that's uh that will help us if we need to evade this thing again Second action, we need to find another clue somewhere, which means more exploring. So let's uh, let's do that. Or actually, do we play our Pathfinder? No, we're gonna save the Pathfinder. Well, 
No, we should... No, we need to get out of here. If we stick around, we're going to get nailed by that strangleweed. So we do need to, to move out here. So I will... Uh, we will explore. Let's see what we do. Circuitous trail is number one. That is not going to help us. We're looking for squares, triangles, and double hash marks. Number two is the rope bridge. It's the moon. Number three is Serpent's Haven. That is a triangle, so that is good news. We managed to get away from the strangleweed, and it is not a hunter, so it will not be chasing us. That's awfully nice as well. That was our second action. Ursula moves over here to the Serpent's Haven. It's a two shroud location with two clues. Each serpent enemy at Serpent's Haven gets plus one fight. After you investigate or explore while at Serpent's Haven, if you are poisoned, take one damage. And it is worth a victory point. So that is awfully nice as well. So double hash marks. Well, oh yeah, okay. So that connects to the mouth. The Serpent's Haven connects to the temple and then some other locations. So I'm not sure if we have to head back to the mouth at some point. We're going to have to deal with this strangleweed again. However, Ursula does get her free action, so we will, her free investigate, so we are going four versus two. Chaos Bag gives us another zero, so we will discover a clue. We've got one action remaining. We can advance the, uh, the act deck if we want. Um, do I want to do that now, or do I want to get another victory point? That would give us three, which is pretty good. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's, uh, let's get this other clue. We will take our final action to grab this other clue. Four versus two. Chaos Bag gives us the... The uh, Elder Thing, which is minus three, and if we fail, we take a Horror. Ellie will take that Horror for us, and uh, so we will simply advance the Act deck now. We will spend our two, and we will flip. Oh, crap. It's the Winged Serpent, the Wrath of Yig. The uh, Winged Serpent, Wrath of Yig, has eight combat, or eight fights, sorry. So that's, yeah, that's way out of our league. It has... Uh, a null value for health, and it has five agility. It has the monster, serpent, and elite traits. It spawns at the mouth of uh, Kinyan. So he's over here. And it has alert, hunter, and massive. So, yeah, okay, that's interesting. Alert, Hunter, and Massive cannot be defeated, cannot make attacks of opportunity. It has the forced effect. After a pillar token is placed on the mouth of Kinyan, exhaust the Winged Serpent. It does not ready during the upkeep phase this round. Okay, so it is a Hunter, and it will hit us for a damage and a horror. So it is going to move during the enemy phase to the Temple of the Fang. That is a little unfortunate. So it's hanging out with the strangleweed. We do get to uh, we do get to put the next act in play, though. Act two A is opening the maw. You have discovered that the ruins within the jungle each bear a distinct pattern of glyphs, which match those found on the six pillars. As you turn the pillars to match these patterns, a serpentine creature descends from the clouds. Investigators at the mouth of Kinyan spend one clue, may spend one clue per group as a, sorry, spend one clue per investigator as a group. You solve one piece of the puzzle, add one resource to the mouth of Kinyan as a pillar token. Oh dear. Objective, solve the puzzle of the six pillars in order to enter Kinyan. If there are six pillar tokens on the mouth of Kinyan, advance to Act 2B. So we need six clues. 
no, five clues because we already have a resource on the pillar or on the mouth. So we need five more clues and then we need to take uh, we need to take five actions. Holy cow. So this is really bad if you uh, if you do particularly badly in boundary beyond this one is a real pain because you've got to take a lot of actions. We've got to spend five we got to find five clues and then take five actions in order to solve the puzzle. So that is going to take us quite a while and we've got this massive hunter uh, enemy that is very beefy. Uh, chasing us through the jungle, which is not going to be good. So after a pillar token is placed on the mouth, we exhaust the serpent and it does not ready. All right. Well, cannot make attacks of opportunity. So we can explore and move away from it without... Uh, taking damage. We can also take that action on the act to uh, solve the riddle. So we have our work cut out for us here. We need five clues and then five actions. It's the upkeep phase. We will uh, draw a card. There is uh, Unearth the Ancients and we will add a resource and we will add a Doom. Two of the five doom on the agenda. Let's draw our next encounter card. It is going to be Lost in the Wilds. Test three uh, willpower. If you fail, take one horror for each point you fail by and add Lost in the Wilds to your threat area. You cannot move or explore. At the end of your turn, discard Lost in the Wilds. So this could be very painful. Uh, for us. If we miss this, we will not be able to explore or move, and that will be bad. So we will uh, use the Unexpected Courage. We will commit the Unexpected Courage to take us to 5 versus 3. Chaos Bag says minus 2. We are successful. Whew. Glad that uh, we ducked that uh, problem. That would have been really bad, really nasty. Okay, it is our turn. We get our three actions. We need to keep moving away from the serpent, and we need to discover as many clues as we can as quickly as we can. So let's play, uh, let's take our first action to investigate. We are going four versus two. I am going to commit this uh, Unearth the Ancients to go five versus, or six versus two. Chaos Bag says there's a cultist. That's a minus two. If we fail, we, t we add a doom. So we do get this clue. So we have three victory points. We have two actions remaining. I'm going to take an action. Well, no, we need to explore. I'd really like to get the Pathfinder down, but exploring is, a, is our priority at the moment. And so we can go... So we've got one clue. We need three, four more. So our second action is going to be to explore. We will shuffle up the explore the, the deck. First is a rope bridge. Can we go to the rope bridge? No, we cannot. Then we draw ants. Oh no. Ants. Test four agility. For each point you fail by, discard a random card from your hand or choose and discard a card from your play area. For each point you fail by. Ooh, yuck. That is bad news. So we will shuffle the rope bridge back in. We are a five versus four. I would like to use that. Uh, I am going to use one of my Pathfinders to uh, commit that to the test so we can go six versus four. Chaos Bag says plus one, so we do succeed. So the ants do not bother us. We have one action remaining, which we will use to explore again. 
We draw the Path of Thorns. That is good for us, I think. Square, square, we do get to move there. All right, we get away from the Winged Serpent for a turn. Path of Thorns has a is a three shroud location with one clue. It has the forced effect after you fail a skill test while investigating Path of Thorns, take a damage. After you explore while at Path of Thorns, if the exploration was not successful, take a damage. And uh, we can move from there to the Temple of the Fang, which is nice. So if this Winged Serpent gives chase. However, we do need to... Uh, we do need to investigate successfully. So we are going four versus three this time around. Chaos Bag is gonna say minus one. We are successful. Hey, two clues, two out of five. We're doing good. All right. The uh, Winged Serpent is a hunter, so it will move to the Serpent's Haven. Okay, we get to draw a card, which is field work. We will gain a resource, and we will add a doom. Three out of five doom. It's turn four. We uh, draw an encounter card, which is the poisonous spores. Ooh, this is a new one. Revelation attached to your location at the end of the round each investigator at the attached location who is poisoned takes two horror each investigator at the attached location who is not poisoned must put a set aside poison weakness into play in his or her threat area instead discard poisonous spores all right so the spores are there we get our three actions so we need to leave here uh, or we will be poisoned this turn, which isn't, I mean, it's bad, but there are no tablets in the, uh, the bag, so that will not uh, cause us to automatically fail skill tests. So we do need to explore after you explore while at Path of Thorns. If it's not successful, we're going to take a damage, but we don't have much choice because we still need three more clues. Let us do that exploring. We will shuffle up the explore deck again. First action, explore, we find the River Canyon. Is that connected? Yes, it is. All right. So we managed to find the River Canyon. We move there for free. And we get one, uh, the River Canyon is a four shroud location with one clue. It has the jungle trait. It has an action, heal one damage from an investigator at River Canyon. Check your supplies if you have a canteen heal two additional damage limit once per game. Okay, it has one clue. We do get our free investigate action with Ursula. We are going four versus three, or four versus four. Ooh, don't like those odds. Uh, do we have anything? No, we don't. We're just gonna go four versus four. Chaos Bag says Cultist. If we fail, we place a doom on our location, so we will do that. So we are advancing the uh, agenda deck this turn. We have two actions remaining. Ah, we need to get this clue, but we haven't seen any of our uh, any of our boosters. Four versus four. Do I draw a couple cards and hope to get one? I think we do. I'm going to spend an action to draw a card. There's an unexpected courage. Okay, we will take our third action. We will commit the unexpected courage in order to uh, investigate six versus four. Chaos bag says minus one. We grab that clue. We are in a race here. We're trying to, to get these clues and get back to the, uh, the mouth of Kinyan before we get to tracked down by this winged serpent. The, winds, the winged serpent is going to move, however, to the Path of Thorns. And uh, we will have to deal with him if we do not keep moving. We need two more clues to solve the puzzle. 
We will draw a card. There's Dr. Ellie again. We will gain a resource. Add a doom. So we are advancing. We will remove the doom from River Canyon. We will flip that over. And Agenda 1B is, are we alone? After exploring the rainforest for hours, you reach the top of a steep ridge from which you can see much of the surrounding area. Uncanny winged creatures caw at you from above, circling over the cavern entrance like vultures waiting for their meal. From this vantage point, you may be able to see approaching threats as they traverse the bush below. If only you had something to help you see farther. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. We will do that. Only two cards in there, so the ants and the lost in the wilds will go back in. The lead investigator chooses one investigator to be the group's lookout. The, that investigator checks his or her supplies. If the lookout has binoculars, he or she is able to see the creatures approaching and avoid it. The lookout suffers no ill effects. If the lookout does not have binoculars, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until an enemy is discarded. Spawn that enemy at the lookout's location. I believe we have uh, binoculars. Do we not? We did bring binoculars along. Hey, so uh, Ursula does spot the enemy, and uh, we suffer no ill effects. So that is nice. Uh, not the... Uh, the Harbinger of Volusia brought him along just in case we uh, do encounter him again, since he seems to appear in some scenarios. Agenda 2A is Setting Sun. The day advances quickly, though the thick, uh, through the thick canopy of trees you can tell that the sun is starting to sink closer to the horizon. To the east the sky, the sky grows dim. Soon the jungle will be covered in darkness, and you will have to stop and make camp for the night. Explore, draw the top card of the exploration deck. If it is a, if it is a connecting location, put it into play and move to it, and it has a doom threshold of 5. Alright, so we still need to draw an encounter card this phase. It is going to be Snakebite. It is a hazard poison revelation test three agility. If you fail, you must either deal five damage to an ally asset you control or take one direct damage. If you are not poisoned, you put the set aside poisoned weakness into your into play. We are a five agility versus three. Chaos bag says plus one. So we pass the snake bite without problem. Okay. We are at uh, the River Canyon, which is connected to many different locations, the Rope Bridge, the Circuitous Trail, and the Expedition Camp, which isn't in this game. We need two clues. I assume they're going to be coming from the Rope Bridge and the Circuitous Trail. So we are going to need to find those. We will gain our three actions, and uh, I believe our first action will be just to explore. Let's see how we do. Uh, did we shuffle up? We did shuffle up last time. We get a Lost in the Wilds, unfortunately, so that is a failure, and we will need to pass a Willpower test. I'm going to commit this copy of Ellie to the test, so we are going four versus three, and hopefully we will pass this. What's the chaos back going to say? It says minus three. That is bad news. So we were four. We go down to one versus three, so we are going to take two horror, and that will go the other copy of Ellie and one on Ichitaka. And we cannot explore or move, so that really sucks. That really, really sucks, because now the serpent is going to catch us this turn, and we are going to take a damage and a horror. I think now is as good as time as we've got two actions left. We might as well play our emergency cash as our first action to gain three resources. 
and then we will play our Pathfinder as our second, uh, as our third action to uh, so we can get that into play finally for three resources. So now we have our Pathfinder, but we cannot move or uh, explore due to the uh, Lost in the Wilds, which will disappear now. During the enemy phase, the uh, the big winged serpent hits us for one damage and one horror. We will take the horror, and we will uh, Ichitaka will take the damage. So it cannot make attacks of opportunity. So we can explore. We don't have to to deal with it. Uh, we just can. Uh, ignore it basically so that's good and we will draw a card which is a unearth the ancients that's got two uh, intellect icons that's awfully nice we will add a resource and add a doom to uh, setting sun our next encounter card is going to be low on supplies uh, it's a blunder. Peril, you must decide. Choose one. Each investigator loses two resources. Each investigator takes a damage, or each investigator chooses and discards an asset. I'll just lose the resources. I'm down to five, so that's okay. Not the worst card we could have drawn by, by a long shot. We will get our three actions. The uh, Serpent is uh, not going to make an attack of opportunity however is it better to try to evade it hmm that's a good question if we evade it then we can it won't attack us this turn I think we're gonna try to evade it as our first action we will play the manual dexterity uh, we will commit that to the skill test to uh, give us plus two agility. So we are five, six, seven versus five. Chaos bag says, oh, you know what that means. There, it's an auto fail. So the uh, not only do we uh, fail to evade the winged serpent, but we end up taking another horror and a damage because the serpent is alert. So that is going to be, yeah, that's really unfortunate. That's terrible timing. Uh, so we are at uh, four horror and two uh, damage right now. Uh, it's not looking good for Ursula right now. I think what we will do is uh, we are gonna try to explore. We've run out of tricks to try and evade this thing. So we will take our second action to explore. We find time racked woods. We that is connected. Okay, so we can move there. Serpent doesn't make an attack of opportunity, so we will move to the time racked woods. Time racked woods is a four shroud location with two clues. Okay, so that will give us all the clues we need. And then we can uh, we can head back to the mouth of Kenyan, and hopefully we will be able to uh, succeed there. As a double action, we can choose a non-elite enemy worth vengeance points in the victory display and place that card in the uh, encounter discard pile. Group limit once per game. It's worth a victory point. So we need to grab this uh, clue if we can. Uh, we do have Pathfinder. Does that help us though? Can we move away? Uh, no, we can't. That, uh, we need the rope bridge in play. So I am just going to do use our free uh, investigate action. I'm going to commit Unearth the Ancients to that to give us a 6 versus 4. Chaos Bag says Cultist. That's a minus 2. So we do grab another clue. We have 4 out of 5 clues. Wow, this is uh, pretty close. Now, the question is, do we explore again? 
or do we simply try to get away? Because we're going to take another damage and horror from the Winged Serpent, and we need to get back to the mouth of Kenyan if we can, where we need two turns once we get there in order to place all the tokens. Okay, what is, what's our odds here? Uh, the only one we could get is the rope bridge. That is the only uh, the only connecting location from Time Racked Woods. What is our uh, four cards in the exploration deck? One is Circuitous Trail, one is Rope Bridge, and there are two treacheries, I believe. One is Low on Provisions, and the other would be, I believe we added a Pitfall to it. So our odds of actually of getting it are uh, not particularly good. I'd like to try to avoid exploring. This is worth victory points. Uh, I think we just have to try to investigate. We take another action to investigate. We're going four versus four. Chaos bag, come on, give us this one. Skull, that's going to be a minus one, unfortunately. And uh, that will be a failure. Serpent moves. It hits us for another damage and a horror. So we are up to... Uh, uh, we've got three damage and five horror. Actually, we can put another damage on uh, Ichitaka. So we are at... Uh, five horror and two damage okay so we need one clue and we need to get out of here draw a card there is a logical reasoning that is not going to help us unfortunately uh, play only if you have a clue which we have but uh, that investigator either heals two horror or hey we can heal two horror that's nice that will help us, and we will gain a resource. I always forget that logical reasoning. I mean, I always think of it as getting rid of the terror card, but uh, you it does heal two horror, which is very helpful. Okay, we're adding a doom. Encounter card is going to be more ants. That's bad news. Agility 4, we are agility uh, 5 versus 4. I'm going to pitch this field work to go six versus four. Chaos bag says plus one, so the ants do not affect us. Where were we? We uh, had discarded the poisonous spores. We had just got our actions. So as I was saying, we need to grab our three. We need to grab this clue. Then we can move uh, to the River Canyon. Then we could move from River Canyon to... Uh, can we get, we have to go back through the strangleweed, don't we? Yep, we do. That kind of sucks. But uh, it's only a three. Uh, we can go, yeah, we can go from Time Racked Woods to Path of Thorns to the Temple but then we would need to evade the apex strangleweed. So really it just comes down to grabbing this clue as quickly as we can. So let's, uh, let's start investigating. Four versus four. Chaos Bag says auto fail. Ouch, we will do it again. Four versus four. Chaos Bag says uh, elder thing minus three. We take a horror. Oh dear. Um, Okay, we got to take a horror. Then I've got to play my uh, logical reasoning to heal two horror, unfortunately. So we do heal two horror, but we do not have a way of, uh, of boosting our uh, intellect here. The uh, serpent is going to hit us again for a damage and a horror. And... We need to uh, we 
We, uh, yeah. So that's the end of the turn. We will draw a card. There is our weakness. Put drawing the sign of the play in your threat area. Your maximum hand size is reduced by five while checking hand size during upkeep. D take two actions to discard drawing the sign. Doesn't really affect us right now since we have no hand, but uh, that really does us no favors since we are going to uh, run out of time here very quickly unless we uh, find a way to get this final clue. We will add a doom. It is uh, three out of five. Our encounter card is Creeping Poison Surge. Each investigator who is poisoned takes a damage. We are not poisoned. We will draw another encounter card. There is Pitfall. It's a trap peril. You must either choose to test three agility to attempt to jump the gap. For each point you fail by, take a damage. Shuffle Pitfall into the exploration deck. You cannot choose this option if Pitfall was drawn from the exploration deck. Uh, we can shuffle Pitfall into the exploration deck. I'm not planning on exploring anymore. I think I'm going to live or die by getting this uh, this clue here. All right, we get our three actions. Uh, if we can get away, uh, if we can move two locations, we'd be in good shape. It's just we need this clue. So let's go four versus four. Come on, Chaos Bag. Zero. All right. Nice. We grab this clue. Okay, now we're cooking with gas. All right, we can move away. We move to the River Canyon. Nice, 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 nice. From uh, Time Racked, we can move to River Canyon. Then we can use our Pathfinder to move to the... Uh, we can move to... Oh, it can come from... Serpent's Haven all the way. Maybe I screwed that up earlier. Yeah, I might have screwed that up earlier. Anyway, we'll see when I watch it back. Uh, we can go uh, from River Canyon to Serpent's Haven. Uh, we can do that for our Pathfinder. Or no, we move to River Canyon, then we Pathfinder to, uh, Path of Thorns, then we move to Serpent's Haven. Okay, I think I did screw up there. Uh, I am going to take an extra damage and a horror, because I think we should have... That serpent should have attacked us one more time. So I'll take the I'll take another damage and a horror here. Uh, we don't need a doom. Uh, we'll go like that. All right. So we did get away from the serpent. The serpent will move. So he is going to come to uh, Serpent's Haven next turn, because I think what he would have done is. Uh, I'll have to look. I'll have to watch it back and see. Uh, I feel like I made a mistake there, but but maybe I didn't. Uh, we'll just have to see. He moves. We will draw a card. There is a deduction. That's a bit uh, late, but uh, we draw. We gain a resource. We will add a doom. There are four out of five doom. Draw an encounter card. There is overgrowth. You cannot explore attached location. That is fine by me. I don't care about that. We gain our three actions. Now we need to slip past the apex strangleweed. Okay, so we do have a chance to finish this off. We can basically, if we can get back to the pillars this turn, then we can... Uh, Then we can start uh, working on the mouth, and that uh, we can win the game. So our Pathfinder should be ready. We have our three actions. 
All right, first action, uh, we will use the Pathfinder to move to the Temple of the Fang. The Strangleweed engages us. Now the Strangleweed will attack us. It has alert, of course. Everything in this game has alert. Uh, but we are a five versus three. We're just going to have to put our faith in the chaos bag. I know that's a dangerous thing to do in this game, but uh, second action is just going to be to evade. Let's see what we do. No, so, sorry. That is our second action. Our first action is evading. Come on, chaos bag. Minus two. Five versus three. Hey, we are successful. We get away from the strangleweed. Man, this is, uh, we're cutting it close here. Uh, second action, we move. We are at uh, the mouth. Okay, now we can take an action. And investigators at the mouth may spend a clue as a group you solve one piece of the puzzle add a resource to the mouth as a pillar token so we spend a clue we add a resource and the forced effect on the winged serpent after the pillar token is placed on the mouth exhaust the winged serpent it does not ready during the upkeep phase this round so he is exhausted that is awfully nice Okay, we are, uh, that is our turn. We are going to need two turns to, to finish this game off here. So we've got to take two encounter cards. Ooh, this is going to be close. So we go to the upkeep. So the serpent does not ready. The apex strangleweed will, but we have left it uh, thankfully behind. We will ready our Pathfinder. We will draw a card. There is our Hyper Awareness. We will draw, we will gain a resource, but we have to add a Doom, and that means we are advancing. Unfortunately. Oh no, night falls in the jungle. Night comes swiftly, blanketing the rainforest in dim moonlight. The sounds of the jungle change as nocturnal creatures start to emerge. Soon the air is filled with the buzzing and chirping of strange insects and even stranger beasts, the identity of which you are unable to determine. The dangers of nighttime are too great to ignore, and the darkness makes it difficult for you to study the glyphs and patterns necessary to shift the pillars correctly. You have no choice but to set up camp and continue your exploration in the morning. Each surviving investigator immediately resigns. Oh, what a bummer that is. Man. Oh, brother. Well, that kind of sucks. So we added one... We spent all of that time just to add one... one resource to the to the mouth okay so what what happens here let's find our uh, I do have the rules for uh, for this one somewhere here this is one of these times I am going to look at what the uh, resolution is because uh, it's fairly important there we go. Okay, so resolution. I'm going to check it here. No no resolution was uh, reached. Okay, so we record how many paths are known. Then we get to replay the scenario. We are no experience points. And we just continue on as, as normal. So that really sucks, I think. That is a very disappointing uh, ending to this, uh, this scenario. It is uh, quite a bit different from... Uh, it's quite different from uh, Untamed Wilds, which is nice. 
However, I really think that uh, I, uh, I'm just disappointed because, uh, you know, it took me... Uh, I played through this scenario and I have almost nothing to show for it except one uh, one resource on the uh, uh, one extra resource on the mouth which means I need three next game which means I'm gonna need fi at least five clues so I get to do this whole thing over again and I believe since uh, oh no it, it gets a little bit easy well not easier we start with the uh, the serpent will start in play, which kind of sucks. So he's going to be chasing you. You would need three pillars. Yeah, I. Yeah, I'm I'm disappointed in this one. Uh, I really don't. Uh, this is uh, this is the second time this has happened. Uh, as you may remember, with Doom of Estley, you had the uh, the opportunity to play it over again, uh, or not. You could simply blow up the temple, or you could play the scenario again. This is the second time that has uh, reared its head, and uh, yeah, I'm sort of used to resolving scenarios in a go, either uh, being defeated and moving on, or uh, or succeeding. And in this case. Uh, yeah, uh, we are just going to go back to the beginning, and I can sort of see how this is going to play out. Basically, we're going to end up having four, there are going to be four, uh, four treacheries in the Explore deck, and only one location, the Temple of the Fang, that we can move from, from the mouth, which means we are just going to spin our wheels there at uh, the mouth until we find it and then potentially taking a lot of damage and or horror from this uh, winged serpent and then we have to collect three clues and then get back here again and do it again so yeah this is uh, yeah hmm bit of a bummer all right well I'm not too sure how to proceed. I think I may we may play it again here and uh, and see how we do and uh, otherwise I will simply move on and play part two of uh, of Heart of the Elders. So you're either gonna see here coming up another uh, ver another game of part one once I get everything set up again or you can move on to uh, to part two. And I am back. We are going to give this uh, puzzle one more attempt and see if we can't uh, get all four resource tokens on the mouth of Kenyan. Uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, replaying scenarios over and over again, but uh, we're going to give this one more shot. Ursula, as we know, starts play at the mouth. Unfortunately, this time the uh, winged serpent is also in play. He is uh, got eight uh, fight, zero health, and uh, five evade. Monster Serpent Elite. He spawns at the mouth of Kenyan. He's got Alert Hunter and Massive. He cannot be defeated and cannot make attacks of opportunity, and we can uh, exhaust him once we place a, a pillar token on the uh, the mouth. So we will uh, we will do our best. We have to go fetch Ichitaka since we need to. Uh, we need to uh, return to the setup. Now, I'm not sure if uh, running out of gas applies to this scenario as well because we uh, ran out of gas. We had to, uh, we weren't allowed to mulligan during our first attempt. I'm not sure whether that applies to subsequent attempts. I'm just going to play it that way and we'll see how we do. And uh, we'll go from there. We do start with Ichitaka in play. She gives us plus one combat, plus two if attacking an enemy with the victory uh, points, and plus one agility, plus two while attempting to evade enemy with vengeance X. And uh, when we add an enemy to the victory display, we may exhaust her, and we can each heal a horror. The uh, agenda is 1A, the jungle's heart. It's got a doom threshold of five. 
and uh, Act 2A is opening the maw, and it has the action that we uh, investigators on the mouth spend one clue as a group to solve a piece of the puzzle, and once we've solved all six, we get to move on. We are playing Heart of the Elders again on standard difficulty. The skulls are minus one, minus three if, if you're at a cave location. The cultist is minus two, and if you fail, place one doom on your location. There are no tablets in the bag, and we've got an elder thing that's worth minus three. If you fail, take a horror. I think we're ready to draw our opening hand, so I will shuffle up. And uh, let's see what we get. Hopefully we can make quick work of this scenario. We uh, get a Dr. Ellie Horowitz. That's nice to see. A deduction, a magnifying glass, an inquiring mind, and a persuasion. I'm not sure the persuasion is going to help us all that much this game, but uh, Dr. Ellie could help us quite a bit Get if we can get that disc out, and uh, that would really be nice to get rid of uh, those, uh, those Apex Strangleweed that we encountered during the last game. I think we're ready to go. We do have Charisma in play, so playing Ellie is an option, and the, uh, the Winged Serpent doesn't make attacks of opportunity. So we will start off by playing Ellie. For three, we will go and search our deck for a disc. Top nine cards for a relic. Let's see if we can get lucky here. And there is a disc. So we do get to put that into play. Nice, very nice. Disc uh, allows us to, uh, as a response, when a non-elite enemy spawns at our location, we can discard it to discard that enemy. So that was our first action. Second action, we're going to use, uh, because we have the compass in our supplies, we are going to use it to look at the top three cards of the exploration deck. Uh, the mouth is only connected to three locations, so uh, we will be looking for the uh, squiggly line, the T, or the hourglass location. We will shuffle it up and see what we get here. Top three cards are the Path of Thorns, the River Canyon and Serpent's Haven, neither of uh, none of which are uh, the mouth are are connected to the mouth. So we will put uh, one of them at the bottom. Uh, we are going to put uh, we'll put the River Canyon at the bottom, I think, because it's got a higher shroud value. We will put. The path and the serpent's haven on top. Whoops. Uh, wrong deck. There we go. All right. So we will uh, use our next action to explore. And so we know what we're going to get. The first two locations don't matter. The next card is Time Racked Woods. That is not connected. Next is the Circuitous Trail. That is not connected. Next card is Lost in the Wilds. So there we go. We will shuffle everything back into the deck. There are only four uh, treacheries in the exploration deck this time around, but uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's going to stop us. So again, Lost in the Wilds, Revelation, test three willpower. If you fail, take one horror for each point you fail by and add Lost in the Wilds to your threat area. You cannot move or explore. Well, that was our last action anyway, so we're just testing three, and uh, we have to take it straight up. Oh, no, we've got uh, Persuasion, so we'll pitch, uh, we'll commit that. So we'll go four versus three. I'm mostly just trying to prevent taking horror. Chaos Bag gives us a zero, so we are okay there. The uh, Winged Serpent will hit us for damage and a horror. We will put uh, the horror on Ellie and the damage on Ichitaka. We will draw a card. There is Jake, another nice uh, ally to see. Gain a resource. We will add a doom and uh, draw our first encounter card of the game. Which is going to be Snake Bite. Test three agility. If you fail, you must either choose one, deal five damage to an ally, or take one direct horror. 
We're going five versus three, that's fine with me. Chaos bag says minus three, so we are going to fail and fail really hard. That is uh, terrible. So we've got to deal five damage to an ally or take a direct damage and be poisoned. I guess we'll just take the direct damage and be poisoned. Uh, I don't want to lose one of my allies at this time. So we will be poisoned, unfortunately. We do have some medicine, though. We can remove it if necessary. All right, well, that was an unfortunate uh, mythos phase. So let's, uh, we get our three actions. We're just gonna keep exploring. I mean, we don't really have money, uh, many other options here, so we will do that. We will shuffle up the exploration deck and uh, hopefully we will find our first, uh, there is Serpent's Haven. There's the Temple of the Fang, so that is nice. We get to put that into play and move to it. Shuffle it up. The, uh, the ruin location is chosen at random, so that's awfully nice. Uh, we put a clue on it. Temple of the Fang is a two shroud location with one clue. Temple of the Fang gets plus one shroud for each vengeance point in the victory display. So we get to move there. And we get to take our free investigate action. So we are uh, we are going four versus three, but during one of the, the player windows, during the skill test, I'm going to play the, uh, the magnifying glass to boost us to five versus two. Chaos Bag says Elder Sign. Hey, that's nice. That is very nice. So we can move to a connect we get plus one and move to a connecting location so we will take that that uh we will take that clue that's awfully nice now what we can do we get to move back to a connecting location so we can move back to uh the mouth of kenyan and then we can use the action on opening the maw to spend a clue to add a resource to the mouth and then we get to exhaust the winged serpent which is awfully nice and it does not to uh, it does not ready during the upkeep phase and we still have an action remaining which is awfully nice so we can move back to uh, temple of the fang so we've put a little bit of distance between ourselves and uh, and the winged serpent that is awfully nice to to do uh, and we've got a, a resource token on the mouth so we've got uh, we need three more that's going to do it for our turn though so we will draw a card there's the expedition journal that is pretty cool that uh, gives us an extra action we can use to explore i might want to put that into play we will gain a resource advance the doom and draw an encounter card which is another lost in the wilds unfortunately we just have to go straight up against this one three versus three so we're probably going to take some horror unless the chaos bag is going to be nice what do you say chaos bag chaos bag says minus five yeah thanks a lot chaos bag uh yeah that really sucked uh, that's terrible. We're taking three horror. One is going to go on Ichitaka, and we'll take two. I uh, want to keep Ellie in play as long as possible, because uh, if we meet that Apex Strangleweed, the disc will uh, get rid of it for us. But we can't move or do anything this turn. So, yeah, unfortunately we're stuck. We're kind of stuck here. So I'm going to play the Expedition Journal. For two resources and uh, that was our first action so we we can take an additional action to explore but we can't because we're lost 
what else can we do here? We can just draw cards or gain resources. Uh, drawing cards, I could get my weaknesses, which would be really bad. I'm just going to gain two resources, I think, as my final two actions. The Winged Serpent readies during our upkeep, so exhausting him really didn't help us all that much because of that uh, Lost in the Wilds. We will draw a card. There's an Unearth the Ancients. We will gain a resource. Add a Doom. We're up to three of five. Turn four, we will draw an encounter card. It is snake bite again. Test three agility. We are five versus three. Uh, deal five damage to an ally. We control or deal take one direct damage. Let's just go five versus three. Chaos bag says zero, so we are fine. All right. We get our three actions back. Ellie does get an extra explore action thanks to the expedition journal, so we will use that now. So we are exploring. We will shuffle up the explore deck and we go to River Canyon. Nope, we're looking for Path of Thorns or Serpent's Haven. Time Racked Woods. Circuitous Trail, Path of Thorns. Okay, so we do find a, a location. That was our free explore action, so we get to move there. All those locations get shuffled back in. Okay, so we get to do an investigate for free. I get, so I'm getting five actions this turn. Awesome, Ursula, awesome. Five versus three. The Path of Thorns, of course, is a three-shroud location with one clue. It has the forced effect after you fail a skill test. While investigating Path of Thorns, you take a damage. And uh, after you explore while at uh, Path of Thorns, if the exploration was not successful, take a damage. So we are going five versus three. I am going to... Uh, do I want to commit something there? Uh... No, I'm not. I'm just going to go five versus three. Chaos bag says minus five, of course. So that's a failure. We're going to take a damage. I'm going to put that on Ichitaka. We're going to explore again, or we're not explore, but we are going to, uh, well, maybe we do want to explore again. If we explored again, we could pick up the the clue from path later. Yeah, I'm going to explore again, I think. I'm going to try this a bit differently. So we are, we're going to explore again. So we're looking for Time Rack Trail or River Canyon or Serpent's Haven here. So we've got a few choices. There's Serpent's Haven. Okay, so that was... Uh, okay, we were here. We used our free explore action. Then we used another explore action to move there. Okay, so now we are at, uh, we have, but we can't use our investigate because it's limit once per round. However, there are two clues at the Serpent's Haven so we will, uh, it's a two shroud location with two clues. Each serpent enemy at Serpent's Haven gets plus one fight. And after you investigate or explore while at Serpent's Haven, if you are poisoned, take one damage. It's worth a victory point. So that was our first action. So that's actually good, I think. Whoops, the wrong tokens. So we can take another action here. We are going to commit what we've got here. We've got uh, five. I'm going to commit a deduction to go six. Uh, and the Unearthed the Ancient seven, eight to investigate. Chaos Bag says minus five again. Eight minus two or eight versus two. We succeed. Take that minus five. 
finally managed to beat that thing. All right, so we do get two clues out of that. Ha! About bloody time we we passed that check with a when we pulled a minus five. So we do get the two clues, which is awesome. Uh, we did fail the check, so we got the two damage. We got a damage. Uh, did we? Oh yeah, we put it on his chaka. Okay. All right, so we are good. We are good there. So we have an action left. So I can just sit tight here, I think. We've got all the clues we need. No, we need one more clue, but we can get that at Path of Thorns next turn. Because now we can start heading back toward the mouth to finish this puzzle off. So I've got one action left. Ah, that's a good question. What do we do with it? Um, I get a free investigate next turn. I'm going to draw a card, I think. We get a manual dexterity. That's nice. Okay. That will help us evade if we draw something. But uh, I'm not sure how many enemies we've got to deal with here. Uh, Winged Serpent is on the move. He's a hunter. Draw a card. There's an unexpected courage. That's good to see. Gain a resource. Add a doom. We're at four of five. And we will draw an encounter card, which is another lost in the wilds. Brutal. Brutal. So we're at three versus three. We are going to go five versus three. Oh, after you investigate or explore while at Serpent's Haven, if you are poisoned, take a damage. So I have to take another damage. I almost missed that. Okay, so we took another damage at Serpent's Haven due to the explore because we're poisoned, but that's okay. So we're going five versus three. Let's see what the Chaos Bag says about this one. It's a cultist, so that's a minus two, so we pass. Nice. Okay. Ursula has our actions back. We are going to advance next turn, but we do know that uh, that's fine. We just have our binoculars, so we will be good. All right, Ursula's going to move. We get a free investigate. I'm going to use my inquiring mind on this one. I'm going to commit it. So we are going five, six, seven, eight versus three. We can trump that minus five again. Chaos bag says zero. We grab a clue. We have all the clues we need. We have two actions remaining. I'm going to move once to the Temple of the Fang. OK, so we've moved once to Temple of the Fang. Now. Do we deal with this guy? Do we try to evade the winged serpent to save ourselves a damage and a horror? We'd be five. I could go. Yeah, we're going to try to evade him, I think, uh, as our final action. They don't get it. They just get. Shroud. Okay, so we're going to commit the uh, manual dexterity and Jake Williams. So we're going to go, we're going to be five, six, seven, eight versus five. Eight versus five. Chaos Bag says Elder Sign. Oh my God, that's awesome. Oh, I love that. Okay, so we get, so this is huge, huge draw for us there. So not only do we evade the serpent, but we get to move to a connecting location. So we're back at the mouth of uh, Kenyan already. And uh, nice, really nice. Oh, that was amazing. So he is going to ready next turn, but we need one turn 
next turn we can clear it. So we've only got to survive one phase. We've only got to survive one uh, mythos phase here. So we will go to upkeep. The uh, winged serpent will uh, will ready. We will draw a card. There's field work. Gain a resource, and we will add a doom. Five of five, so we are advancing. And uh, again, as it is that, uh, are we alone? And uh, we see the, because we have the binoculars uh, in our, we have to shuffle the encounter deck into the encounter discard pile into the deck. So we will do that now. Okay, and then if we've got binoculars, we see uh, the creature and avoid it. So we suffer no ill effects. That's nice and we simply go on to the next agenda, which is agenda 2A, setting sun. And as we know, if we uh, do not pass this, then we are uh, hooped. The game will end, we will automatically resign, and we will have to do it all over again. It's got a doom threshold of five though, so that's uh, we've, we do have some time to deal with it. We do have to draw an encounter card though, which is going to be pitfall trap peril you must either choose one test three agility to attempt to jump the gap for each point you fail by take a damage or shuffle pitfall into the exploration deck you cannot choose this option if pitfall was drawn from the exploration deck so we will shuffle it into the exploration deck that's fine by me we will shuffle that up and we get our three actions, but uh, I think we win this turn because all we need to do now is take three actions with the uh, action on opening the maw. We've got the three clues, so we will spend a clue to add a resource, and we will exhaust the, maw, the uh, winged serpent is our first action. As our second action, we will do that again add a clue, or sorry, add a resource, and finally we will spend our last clue and do it one more time. We have six resources on the pillars. Objective, solve the puzzle of the six pillars in order to enter Kenyan. If there are six pillar tokens on the mouth of Kenyan, advance to Act 2B. We get to advance. Act 2B is entering Kenyan. With a deep rumbling that shakes the ground outside, something inside the cavern shifts. In a distinct sequence, the six, the six obelisks slowly descend into the ground, twisting and turning. The serpent creature that guarded the cavern lets out a shriek of anger and hate before flying off and vanishing behind the tree line. One by one, the stone pillars disappear into the dirt, and the earth stops shaking. Resolution 1. Oh dear. Whew. All right, well, we managed to, uh, to beat this thing. I'm just going to check Resolution 1 quickly. Swallowing your fear, you enter the cavern. So we record uh, the jungle is watching us. And uh, Vengeance X, we didn't have any Vengeance. We do get some victory points. And we may not alter our decks between uh, this and the next scenario. So we do earn ourselves three, uh, three VPs out of this scenario. That's awfully nice. We will add that to the one VP we saved from the last time. Unfortunately, we were poisoned which means we uh, will have to shuffle this poison weakness back into our deck until we can get rid of it. Uh, we do have medicine, which is good. But uh, we do do it. It did take us two attempts to, uh, to solve the puzzle of uh, Heart of the Elders, but we did manage to do it. Like I said uh, earlier, I'm really not a fan of the uh, repeatedly... Uh, playing scenarios over um, I think we did we we did get lucky this time we drew uh, a very good hand and we managed to uh, to get the cards we needed and we did get 
uh, the temple, the path, and the uh, Serpent's Haven right uh, off the bat. So we were able to uh, to succeed. I think if you were playing, if you do really well in Boundary Beyond, say you uh, clear three locations, you've only got to put three to three resource tokens on the mouth, which is pretty good um, playing in solo. If you do as badly in Boundary Beyond as I did, this is going to be really tough to do in one in one attempt, and. Uh, it might take you two or three attempts if you're really unlucky like I was the first time. And uh, yeah, I think it's just, it's one of those things where you're just going to sort of get ground down by the, uh, if you're unable to do it, you're going to keep taking uh, trauma and that's just going to really hurt you in the end. So yeah, I'm not crazy about the whole repeat scenarios thing. Otherwise, you know, it's this scenario is quite a bit different than Untamed Wilds. The, a lot of the cards are the same, though, so it's it's not that much different. Uh, the explore mechanic is the same. The only real different thing about it is the puzzle, and uh, it's not too hard to do. Like it's it's fairly easy to solve the puzzle. You just need to get the clues, and if you start off well, then you can finish this scenario really quickly, I think, before uh, you take too much damage and horror. So I would certainly rank this this one down with uh, Threads of Fate in terms of difficulty. I found Threads of Fate fairly straightforward, and I think this one is fairly straightforward, with the exception of the uh, the repeating the scenario if you fail. Now, I'm not sure why they, the designer decided to do that. I thought with Setting Sun... Before I flipped it, I was sort of expecting, okay, if we've got a blanket, we spend the night, things are fine, then you flip it back to uh, Agenda 2A. Uh, so you it would depend how you pass the night. If you had a blanket, things would be okay. If you didn't have a blanket, you'd be in deep trouble. Unfortunately, it just forces you to resign, and you're right back at square one, which is uh, pretty rough if you had a, a particularly good game going. But we do get out of this with uh, three VPs, so that's awfully nice. We will take it, and uh, we will keep on trucking. So uh, I will be back. Uh, you guys can probably, uh, I'll have uh, part two of Heart of the Elders, uh, and we will see how we do in that one. That's going to do it for me. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If uh, you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your other sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.